Hey there, this is Badger of Badger Goodger on YouTube, and today we are going to continue talking about all that anti-piracy silliness, but this time for GTA Episodes from Liberty City. To start this video off, it's important to mention that Rockstar Games had decided to reuse three well-known layers of protection from GTA 4 for the episodes. Once again, all of these protections were meant to slow down crackers from cracking their precious game. As we already know from my previous video on this topic, the most important protection of them all is Rockstar's own creation, which we know as a hidden crack protection. This sneaky little thing was made for only one purpose, and that was to spy on copy protection. If the hidden crack protection sees that the copy protection doesn't do its job anymore, it activates some special anti-piracy measures which are meant to break the game. In the episodes, these effects are sneaky booby traps left in some missions which result in the missions becoming broken and super unfair towards the pirate, everyone's beloved drunk camera which is nothing more than just a constantly shaking screen with the sole purpose of annoying you, lower engine health which will always be at 10% meaning that every single car you enter will emit black smoke making it very fragile with a high chance of it breaking down after the first car accident, and finally, everyone's most hated feature here, the auto acceleration, which works as if Johnny or Luis didn't want to move their foot off the gas pedal, giving you no choice other than to keep driving forward. Once again, the people who cracked the game had to deal with these sneaky anti-piracy measures to make the game fully playable for freeloaders without them having issues for having no license. But what for? Of course, to prove that they can beat Rockstar's complex security system in one of the most demanded game franchises and becoming world famous for doing so. But before we move on, I want to warn you that in this video, we are for the most part going to talk about the hidden booby traps left in the missions. The rest of the anti-piracy measures were already discussed and shown in depth in my older video about GTA 4. Trust me, no matter how hard I tried, I did not find anything new about those very same measures in the episodes, so I don't see the point in repeating myself over and over again. So yeah, let's finally start looking at the missions in the first portion of the game dedicated to Johnny's adventures in The Lost and Damned. The first mission where the developers wanted to punish a freeloader is the famous mission Bad Cop Drop, given by Jim Fitzgerald early in the game. How do we play this mission in the normal game? Well, first we meet with Jim and decide to deal with the crooked cops who are about to blackmail us by leading them to an ambush. In order to progress further, we have to locate these cops near our hideout and do whatever it takes to make them angry and follow us. And then we have to gently lead them to an ambush site where more Lost MC members are waiting for us to help us in the shootout. In other words, it shouldn't be a big deal unless you're playing a semi-cracked version of the game. If the crack protection is tripped, then the pirate has to deal with the fact that the crooked cops will refuse to follow Johnny and Jim, and they'll remain parked in the same spot where they were chilling previously. And you might think, how does this teach anyone who cracked the game a lesson? This would just make the mission much easier if you could just drive all the way to the checkpoint without anyone shooting at you, right? Well, no, that is wrong. Eventually, the game will tell you that you've driven too far away from the cops, and it'll ask you to return so they could start following you. And starting from this very moment, the freeloader will realize that it's impossible to complete the mission because there's no way to achieve this goal. And you know what? I am 100% sure that the unscrupulous gamer will want to fix the situation by trying to move the cops' vehicle somehow. Unfortunately for them, the developers weren't idiots and prevented that from happening by gluing the police buffalo to the ground with the help of a simple script. Funny thing is, there's no point in even ramming their vehicle with something much stronger, like, say, a multi-ton bus. No matter what they do, it is impossible to budge that stupid police buffalo from that spot. I even tried to throw the cops out of their car, but then I realized the doors are locked like they are in the normal version of the game. Not even sure what you could do with that if you were able to do it, though. But anyway, do you want to know how to beat this pesky anti-piracy measure? Well, all Johnny needs to do is die during this mission and the car will immediately unfreeze. In other words, this is another dead end for pirates. If the freeloader somehow managed to skip that broken mission, then they should be prepared to deal with another anti-piracy measure waiting for them in the mission Off Route given by Thomas Stubbs III. I want to remind you that during this mission, Stubbs asks us to liberate some prisoners who are about to be transported in a prison bus somewhere that, according to Stubbs, they don't belong despite being tax evaders. In other words, it's politics. So what does a regular player who bought the game do during this mission? First, they drive to the police station and make their way to the prison bus, dealing with countless cops and feds along the way. 
Then they hijack the prison bus and try to lose the heat as soon as possible. When they're done with that, all they have to do is take Stubbs' friends to the drop-off point, and that's it. Mission complete. But what does a freeloader do during this mission? Well, literally the same thing, but sooner or later they will face one upsetting fact about this mission. Eventually, they will notice that the prison bus they need to steal is emitting thick black smoke from the hood, which is kind of a bummer to see. Funny thing is, the developers were quite generous this time because it's not completely broken. You see, they lowered its engine and petrol tank's health to 50 units, making it almost broken. Of course, in comparison with the normal game, these numbers are still too freaking low, but let's face it, the freeloader has no other option besides taking this almost broken bucket of bolts and trying to complete the mission anyway. And you know what? No matter how hard Rockstar developers probably laughed when they were coding this anti-piracy measure, it actually is possible for them to complete the mission. They just have to remember one simple rule. Avoid ramming police cars with the front end of the bus. Well, you can try to clear your path with a few weak hits during playthrough, but be prepared to eventually explode from the tiniest impact with an unlucky driver ending Johnny's current adventures. But anyway, I'll repeat this again. It is possible to complete the mission till the very end. I've managed to complete it twice, but this was not twice in a row, and I had many unsuccessful attempts before achieving this each time. It seems that the developers didn't fully test this anti-piracy measure to understand that the prison bus is a really strong vehicle in this game. Not to mention they completely forgot that the bus has bulletproof protection during this mission. You see, there was absolutely no point for them to lower the petrol tank's health because there's no way to damage it during this mission. If we take, for instance, the same bus but without this bulletproof flag, then it will explode pretty fast if you know where to shoot at. So yeah, it would have made more sense for them to get rid of the bulletproof flag for pirates in this mission too. I bet that it would be a total disaster for a freeloader. But instead, it's the first and last mission in the GTA 4 universe that can be fully completed with the anti-piracy measures in this code. Nice job, Rockstar. Nice job. What's more interesting is the fact that the developers actually planned to implement the first surprise for pirates at the very beginning of the game in the mission Angels in America, where we have to chase members of the Angels of Death for interrupting our party in the clubhouse while celebrating Billy's release from rehabilitation. According to the mission code, the developers wanted to do something nasty with Billy's phone call, which takes place after you deal with all the rival gang members during the chase. In other words, the place where the developers wanted to break the mission was decided, however, they didn't actually code the punishment, leaving that place blank. Perhaps Billy's call that I was talking about before was never meant to happen for pirates. If so, maybe the mission would have probably glitched out and continued on forever. Who knows? The funny thing is, the developers also decided to reuse the famous anti-piracy measure from GTA 4 involving accessing computers throughout the game where no matter how many times you press the action key to access a computer, nothing will happen, but the hint about using a computer will still appear over and over again. So yeah, as in GTA 4, the freeloader is prohibited from using the internet in this game, meaning that there's no way to lurk through the various goofy web pages. but to be honest, it isn't really a big deal in this add-on, and here's why. You see, in the base game, thanks to this measure, you can't complete at least five different missions, and that is a huge problem there. But in Johnny's adventures, there are zero problematic missions in that regard. What's more interesting is that the developers also reused the hidden booby trap left in the police computer scripts. When you want to use a police computer, upon pressing an action key, nothing will happen and the hint disappears. For the most part, this restriction doesn't do anything bad in this add-on either. I mean, what's the point of viewing current crimes for Johnny if there was no such feature in the first place? You also can't hunt the most wanted people from the database because there was no such feature in The Lost and Damned. I'm not even sure if the pirates would be so upset to live without an option to call the police for backup because, let's face it, this is a pretty useless option to choose. Try to convince me that I'm wrong. And with that, we are finally done with The Lost and Damned. And it's about time that we dive into Luis Lopez's adventures in The Ballad of Gay Tony. The first mission where the pirates would suspect that something is wrong with their game is in the mission Practice Swing given by Tony Prince himself. To remind you, during this mission we are told that Tony had simultaneously sold his business to two different buyers. And in order to solve this problem, we need to meet with at least one of the buyers at a golf course ASAP. As soon as we arrive there, we find Rocco, who is trying very hard to hit a union official with a golf ball, but failing miserably. 
When Rocco's patience runs out, he asks us to step in and help to finish the job by getting some precious information out of the dude while doing so. In short, it isn't really hard to do that in the normal game, all we have to do is choose the right shot position and hit the ball when the descending power bar reaches as close as possible to the black line. If you did everything right, then the game will show you exactly where you hit the guy. If you do it three times, the game will activate the next sequence, but only in the normal version of the game. The thing is, the crack protection will never allow the game to register a clear shot. No matter how hard you try, the golf balls will always bounce off the union official without really hurting him. See that? Just bounce right off. That's unfair, right? Well, since the game always thinks that the freeloader made a bad shot, Rocco won't shut up about how bad you're supposedly playing. And what's more funny is that Tony will always give useless recommendations on how to be better. Of course, eventually the freeloader will get bored from this and will try to exit the minigame, but unfortunately for them, the game won't allow them to do it, and the only way to end this mission is to either reload the save or exit the game, because otherwise they will be endlessly knocking golf balls into the course, hearing Tony's recommendations along with Rocco's indignations and complaining. Not cool. You ever swung one of those things before, for Christ's sake? The next mission where the developers prepare their special surprise is the mission number three for Mori Kibbutz. But before doing something cool in this mission, we have to listen to Mori's speech about him being cool but not his brother, as well as arguing with Luis. As soon as everyone has nothing else to add, Mori suddenly offers us a chance to have some fun to which we agree. As you might remember, having fun involves luxurious sports cars which are kept at the car park near Middle Park. But before we get to have fun, we have to use a button to lower the platform for Brucey so that he could get into his car, and then we have to lower the platform again for ourselves. And after that, we have to participate in this crazy ride involving police pursuits with them chasing after us in helicopters. And remember, we're doing it for fun. But did you really think that Rockstar would let the pirates have fun during this mission? I bet you didn't. Because as soon as a freeloader tries to lower the platform, they will immediately realize they can't control this stupid thing. I'm not joking, right now I am mashing every single button I can, and nothing happens. That's because the developers made a loop in the scripts for pirates. For the most part, consider it a mission failure thinking about where to find the next save to skip this mission. But that's not all. The developers also made it impossible to complete the well-known mission Parties Over for Rocco Pelosi. They must have really thought that someone would find the strength to complete the game like this up to this very moment. But anyway, in the normal game, this mission plays out in a very chaotic way. First, you speak with these angry people in the public toilets in Middle Park. Then you have to speak with them in one of Tony's clubs. Then we have to defend our club from other uninvited enemies. And in the end, Tony feels very unhappy and goes home on foot alone. Do you know how the developers wanted to ruin the mission for anyone who pirated the game? They were very clever about it. As soon as you start defending your club from enemies, be prepared to see a message telling you that Tony suddenly died followed by a subsequent mission failure. Without any doubt, the first time this happens, you would probably have no idea of what was going wrong. But after you repeat the mission over and over again, you'll definitely notice that as soon as you eliminate the third enemy in the club, it's like Tony gets struck with a heart attack that makes him fall to the ground. And unfortunately for anyone playing like this, it is impossible to bypass this measure, meaning that the freeloader can forget about completing this mission once and for all. Or maybe there is a way to do this, but we just don't know yet. And hey, I bet that one of you might have experienced this issue with the mission in the past, but we'll discuss it a little bit further. Anyway, you know what's strange? The developers in this add-on decided to reuse only one GTA 4 anti-piracy measure in the mission scripts, and this involves police computers. As in the previous add-on, the measure doesn't do anything new or something bad to the player, because let's face it, who would care about not being able to call for the worthless police backup in this add-on too? And yes, that's right, for some reason Rockstar Games decided to lift their famous ban on freeloaders not being able to use computers in this add-on. And to be honest, this is a rather strange decision. Did they forget that there's a mission called Blog This where we have to use computer to progress further? According to the game lore, there's a blogger who writes stupid things about us in our clubs trying to damage our image. In order to solve this issue, we are told to visit his website and leave a comment telling this blogger to get in touch with us. So yeah, by getting rid of this anti-piracy measure, Rockstar Games made this mission playable for a freeloader, not to mention they made surfing over the internet possible too. But the reason for them doing this is a complete mystery. As you can see, Rockstar still did their best to make the pirate's life more complicated again. 
As a result, anyone cracking the game had to be very careful to get rid of every single booby trap Rockstar prepared for them. And this wasn't so easy. They could, for instance, get rid of the famous drunk camera but miss that the game breaks missions for that. Or they could miss something else and the crack protection would still be tripped, but this time with a longer delay. It's hard to explain, but this system was very tricky and complex. Sometimes it could just stay inactive for a few launches, making it a headache for someone trying to crack the game to debug this stuff. But the question remains, did this complex three-layer protection slow down people from cracking the game? Was it really worth it after all that? You might be surprised to hear this, but the answer is undoubtedly yes. The thing is, during that period of time, games were usually cracked either on day one or even days before their release, and it was a huge problem back then. Various publishers and game studios had suffered from big losses thanks to the piracy, and you can see some good examples from that in the past. Do you know how long episodes from Liberty City remained uncracked? This protection lasted for a whole four days before the famous Wares group Reloaded finally cracked the game. And it was, in my opinion, still a huge success for Rockstar Games. What's more important is that due to the fact that at this time, unskilled software crackers didn't share their incomplete cracks for the episodes, the pirates got their hands on a fully cracked version of the game from the very beginning, having no problems with the anti-piracy measures. In other words, the situation we saw with GTA 4, where loads of people got unfinished cracks with a drunk camera and other unpleasant goodies, didn't happen. And that is why people don't know much about them in episodes from Liberty City. In general, everyone was happy, but was the situation really that good? Sadly, some of those who legally bought the game and didn't use any cracks still experienced those anti-piracy measures as if they were pirates. One of the best examples of this unfairness involved using an ordinary antivirus by the name of Bitdefender. For some reason, the game treated Bitdefender as if it was an intrusion that could be used to enable goodies for pirates. After much trial and error, people figured out that disabling this antivirus helped them to solve this issue. Luckily for them, this bug was later fixed. The funny thing is, people had this problem only with episodes from Liberty City, but not with the base game. This makes me think that Rockstar invested some time into improving their crack protection for the add-on, making it more tough. Furthermore, people could also trigger crack protection by simply putting mods into their games. Now, I know this sounds stupid, but a lot of people wrote about not being able to complete the mission Parties Over because, according to them, as soon as they killed the third enemy in the club, Tony, for some reason, died and this was making them super angry. Why did people blame mods for that? Well, that's because after reinstalling the game and not putting mods in, they finally had success in completing this mission. Luckily for them, this problem was later fixed either by improving mod techniques or by Rockstar Games themselves. Even more interesting is that sometimes these anti-piracy measures can be triggered for no apparent reason when playing the game on older patches. I would say that this is just a rumor, but I once or twice had this problem in a fully licensed game in the past. It seems that Rockstar has fixed this issue because people don't really write about these issues anymore. To be honest, it is kinda strange to see that ordinary people had suffered from more of these anti-piracy measures than a typical freeloader, which makes it super unfair to those who legally bought the game. Perhaps this was the price to pay for not letting pirates crack their game right away. Who knows, maybe it was a good idea to remove this protection after the game was fully cracked, but it is up to Rockstar to decide what is better for us. And by the way, I want to give special thanks to Zalika for finding these traps in the mission code and for sharing this information with me, and for helping me activate them. Without his help and dedication, this video would not be possible. For more videos on GTA, beta-related content, and other stuff, visit my channel, Badger Goodger, on YouTube. And don't forget to follow Vadim and me on Twitter. This has been Badger, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day out there.